The 2018 NFL Draft is just eight days away, and players who have sacrificed themselves, worked hard, and enjoyed a successful college career will soon see their dreams come true by playing in the NFL. And we're here to talk it up with one of those players today as we go one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Faison, a top 20 ranked cornerback prospect at our lads for the 2018 NFL Draft on the OFN Meeting Room with Greg DePama. All right, it's Wednesday, April 18th, 2018. I'm Greg DePama. Thanks for tuning in to the OFN Meeting Room as we talk NFL Draft with Virginia Tech cornerback Brandon Faison. So, Brandon, you're a true definition of a student athlete if there ever was one after spending five years at Virginia Tech and getting a degree in biology. So uh, I just want to let you know I look forward to this conversation. Thanks for speaking with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, Brandon. Uh, so I have to start off by asking you this one very important question as a soon-to-be MD. ER or Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> uh, I think I want to say ER. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, love, I love the show House, too. All right. So I, see, I, I missed one. So who is House? Is that, is, would House be at the top of the list? I think so. Oh. I, I enjoy watching House. Uh, I'll be... I know there's um there's tons of the episodes on Netflix and things like that, so um I yeah. think it's, I, I like that show a lot. Yeah, I actually started watching Grey's Anatomy uh, just uh, about six months ago on Netflix as well. I haven't seen House yet, though. I always wanted to see that as well, so I'll have to catch up on that one. Thanks for the advice. Definitely. You should try it out. I will. Okay, so uh, what do you like the most about becoming a doctor, uh, more specifically a cardio doctor? What is it? Um, I think it's just, uh, you know, ever since I was little, I, I just always loved helping people. And, um, you know, if, if anyone was ever in need or in struggle of anything, you know, I'd always, um, you know, love to help them um, just to make it easier on them. But I think that's where, where my passion started to grow for uh, being a doctor. And then, um, you know, my teacher introduced me to some, to some uh, quite, quite gruesome, uh, you know, body parts, <laughs> All right. parts of, of the uh, cow and that's how it all started. But I just love helping people. So I think that's where it all came to, um, came to start. I mean, was it really what was I know a lot of people think that, well, I don't know if I could ever become a doctor because uh, it's really I mean, the human body and what, what you got to see and what you got to go through. Uh, was that always something that you just felt comfortable with? Yes, sir. I think I always felt comfortable with that. Um, you know, I was in being a biology major at Tech, I had to, uh, you know, just work really hard and and, and be able to um, just motivate myself and, and to get through all these tests and all the study uh, hours that I had to put in. Sure. So um, I think it was all worth it. You know, I know it was all worth it. Um, it's something that I had a passion for, and you know, I went in and chased it, and I, I completed the completed the deal. All right. So do you think I, I, I do have to ask you if if you think whether or not NFL teams will shy away from you because they might believe, uh, well, he's not going to give everything on the football field. Uh, he's got a great career outside of football waiting for him. Uh, as soon as he gets an injury, he's going to start thinking about career, his career after football. Uh, do you think that's something that might occur? Um, you know, I would hope not. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I brought to attention that, you know, football is my main focus right now. Um, you know, hopefully after a, a long career in the NFL, that, you know, I could maybe get a chance to do, you know, the other things that I had been um, working so hard for. But, you know, as of right now, you know, football is my main focus. Um, you know, I love this game of football. It's, it's my passion. And, and this is and this is where my heart is. All right, Brandon, you had to deal with several injuries during your college career, including a shin injury that took you out for most of the 2014 season. Uh, how are you feeling right now? I feel great. Um, you know, it's been working hard in, the, in, in this this process. And, you know, I got, got a chance to train uh, at the Fisher Institute with Brett Fisher. Um, and, and Coach Sullivan, and they did a wonderful job, um, you know, just rehabbing and, and just, 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 he just helping the body feel right and, and strong and everything like that. So, you know, with those, with those guys helping me along the way, um, I feel great still keeping up with, with those exercises and, and, those, uh, and those workouts. I'm, I'm feeling good. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about this lack of silly stats, Brandon. You burst onto the field at the Hokies five years ago as a freshman, recorded five interceptions, uh, which was just one behind your former teammate that season, Kendall Fuller. 
Uh, how do you respond to anyone who wants to know why you failed to register an interception over your final three seasons and whether that has anything to do with you having success in the NFL? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I had a great season my freshman year, but I just feel like I've, I've improved so much as a player, um, you know, over the course of years and, and, and every year I've just gotten better and better. Um, you know, I'm still a ball hawk. You know, I've, I've, I broke the record at Virginia Tech and with 47 pass breakups. So, um, you know, <laughs> I still consider myself a ball hawk and, and what team, whatever team decides to draft me, um, they're going to get a ball hawk and a, and a warrior and a guy who is going to get his hands on a lot of balls. So, um, you know, that, I don't, I don't pay attention to the, to the interception deal. Um, you know, they're going to come and, you know, I'm, I'm going to make sure that there's a lot of them in this, at this next level. So you think you have good hands. That's not an issue with all those pass breakups. It's not because you can't, when, when the ball comes your way, it's not because you can't catch the interceptions. Uh, that, that, that's not it. There's nothing to do with it. No, that's not, that's not it. Definitely not. You know, I left a couple in the field, but, uh, you know, you just learn from those things and you continue to push on and, uh, you know, I consider myself a ball hawk, and I think everyone else does too. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, have you spoken to Kendall since he was traded? Uh, were, were you shocked about that? That must have, you know, must have been nice for him to play in the same area he grew up uh, in and went to college, and now he's going to head over to to Kansas City. Uh, w w was that a was that a shock to you? Definitely. You know, it was. You know, he had a great year, um, and you know, I I've known Kendall for some time, and you know, we're great friends, and we talk all the time. Um, he's been helping me throughout this draft process and, you know, just giving me some tips and, and things like that. So, um, you know, it was definitely a shock to see him traded, but, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the business. And, that's right. and, you know, he's happy to be in uh, Kansas City. All right. Now, uh, speaking of uh, former teammates, I'm going to be interviewing one of them, Cam Phillips, on Friday. Uh, so, and, and I, first of all, did you get a chance to, uh, I'm assuming you did, but did you get a chance to match up with him a lot in practice over the years? And how did that go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they it was a battle all the time. And, um, you know, that's what you like. Uh, you know, it was almost kind of like a game time situation um, every every day in practice. And, you know, Cam's a great teammate, a great player. Um, you know, he, 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 he does some things to where you just kind of just like, wow. So you just – you got to be on your A game every single time you go up against him. And I know he's going to uh, make the most of this opportunity. If you had one question you think I should ask him, what would that question be? Uh, Give me something good. Man, who's the the greatest, the greatest, let's see, artist slash rapper alive? Ooh, that greatest artist slash rapper alive. Yes, sir. Okay, I like that one. I would never have asked that question. Awesome. I'll get that to him for sure. Okay, uh, let's see. What about your other teammate, Jermaine Edmonds? Uh, he could go as high as top five. What makes him so special? And he's he's a freak of an athlete. Um, you know, he's it's a humble guy who, who goes in and works hard every single day. Um, you know, he does some things on the field and you're just kinda like, Wow and you know, I've I've had, you know, a great opportunity to play with him, um, over these these couple of years and you know, I know he's gonna do uh, great things in the NFL. Uh but just a great a great guy, um, all together and, and he work he goes in and he works hard every single day. Did you have a favorite NFL team growing up, Brandon? Uh you know, I. That's, uh, you not know, I, not I that that's where you want to get so, drafted. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know, yeah. just somebody that you rooted for. I mean, you know, anything it w could be the Redskins or uh, could be somebody else. You know, I I, I uh, grew up in Georgia, so oh, you know, I, yeah, was a, I was a Falcons fan. Um, you know, and 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 I love you know I love the the way that the Patriots play. Um, I just love football in general, though. I just I just oh, love yeah. watching the team, watching matchups. And, things like that so uh that's just i I'll, I'll watch football in my downtime i'll you know go on youtube and just watch games when it's when it's in the off season things like that so i just love football well speaking of watching players uh whether it was on tv uh, over your college career and i'm speaking of college or uh maybe even when you were at the game and you were playing against this uh this opponent and this opponent was on defense so you weren't going up against them, obviously, one-on-one. -on -one. Was there a player that, that that stuck out to you, somebody that maybe the fans should keep an eye on? I'm not talking about stars, you know, the obvious answers, but maybe a player that, you know, maybe fans don't realize, hey, you know what, this guy could be a middle-round draft pick, something like that, that kind of impressed you. Just in general, my team, or just in the, uh, in the yeah. Let's go outside your team. Okay. Uh, man, let me see. Um... I think I got I think I got two guys. Okay. Uh, 
I got um, Cam Moore from Boston College. Huh. Um, you know, he's he's a great corner. Um, you know, he he does his thing every single week. And, and, and Trey Flowers from Oklahoma State. Tra- okay. And why Trey Flowers? Uh, you know, he I, I got a chance to train with those guys, and you know, I've and I've you know I've gone against those guys and. Um, during during the process of, of my collegiate career, okay, and, you know you just sit back and watch, and you you kind of just you just like what they do. You know they're they're hard workers, and, and those I think those guys are just going to be um, those those guys are going to be great NFL uh, players. And, you know, they, it's just one of those one of those things you got a feeling of. Okay, sounds good. I'll I'll keep that registered away, and uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, follow these guys and, and see how things go for them in the draft and during their career. All right, uh, tell me about your career give me a game film that you were most proud of just one game that if scouts wanted if you if 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 they said okay give me just one game film the scouts wanted and you had to give it to them which one would it be man uh i think i think uh you want from this year or just over my oh over your career could be any anyone it's just one so you you got to impress them and you got to take one game not, you know, not not everything spliced together. So just one game that you felt was, you know what, that was maybe the most impressive game that I could remember that I played in. Not the team, but okay. I played in. Okay. Uh, I think. Let me see. That's a hard one. That's a, that's a really hard one. But I, you know, I, I really like the game I played against uh, North Carolina State, and I think that was my um, my sophomore year. Uh, that's a hard question. I think I like that game a lot. Uh, made a lot of a lot of big plays in that game. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that okay. game. Okay, wow. Well, it must be a good game if you can remember back to – you're going back to your sophomore year. So that's that's pretty good. And and, and, yes, and was there any one particular thing that stuck out as far as that game? No. We, we were we were just locked in. Okay. It was, a, it was a Thursday night. and Ah, uh, there you go. That helps. And, you know, it, was, it, was, it had a lot of distractions, like the weather and stuff like that. But we okay. didn't get to us and be – we went out there and just executed the game plan, and and I think we we, we balled out. All right, now as that far was hard, that was a hard one though. All right, well I well, I hope so. Uh, I, <laughs> that's my job. What about uh, the team? G- give me a, a best best win ever as a team. Best win ever as a team. Um, I think I have to say. I think I have to say uh, our game against Arkansas. Um, bowl game, my, yeah, bowl game. We we were down twenty four points. Um, at half. Oh yeah, that's right. We, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, one. we were down twenty four, and you know we we went in the locker room. Um, you know we we had a little had a little speech, had a little talk, and we all went out. We went out there with some fire, and uh, you know just started executing. We started playing loose, and uh, I think that was the, that was the best team win we've had. And, you know, twenty four points down in a bowl game. And you come back to win, uh, you know. So that was a great game for all of us. Yeah, that was uh, now that was Justin uh, Coach Fuente's first year, correct? That yes, was sir. his first year. Yes, sir. So, so you actually uh, also were coached under Frank Beamer. So, yes, sir. How, how how was that? I mean, obviously Fuente's got a, got a ways to go in his career to catch up to all the wins and all the you know the great history that Frank Beamer. Uh, was able to produce a Virginia Tech, but uh, how was that transition, and what was it like to play under both coaches? Um, you know, it was it was a great a great opportunity to play for both coaches. You know, Coach Beamer is is definitely a Hall of Fame coach, and and he did a, a tremendous job in his time there. And um, and when when the when it happened to to you know the, the transition over to Coach Fuente, you know, he came in and. You know, he just – he didn't want to change too much about the program. Um, he wanted to, of course, add some things in, but he wanted to, to keep it based around, you know, Coach Beamer. So, um, you know, it was, it was a total respect thing. And, you know, I think the transition was easy for everyone. You know, it was different having different coaches and, and things of that nature. But I think it was a smooth transition because we just bought into the, bought into the uh, idea of it. And, and we all just worked hard. And, you know, they, they expect a lot, of, a lot from us. Um, they, they expect perfection even though – uh, perfection is is impossible, uh, but you want to get to it as close to it as you want to get to it as close to it as possible. And um, you know, I think it it was a smooth transition, and uh, everybody bought into the program. And I think that's why it was such a great season. All right, Brandon. Well, uh, this was great uh, getting to know you. And uh, what are you going to be doing for the draft? 
Yeah, man, I'm, I'll, I'll probably be uh, at home, family and friends, and just uh, waiting on that call. All right. Well, we certainly hope the call is early enough, but no matter what happens, where you go, we wish you the best of luck. I'm sure you're going to have an outstanding career, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again real soon. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk to you before the season starts. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. All right. That's Brandon Faison from Virginia Tech. Uh, Hokey no more. On his way to the NFL with Cam Phillips, Jermaine Edmonds, and uh, several other teammates. So it's uh, it's 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 a great time for uh, look eight days. This is it, man. This is uh, as as fans, football fans. I mean, this is we've been counting the days, especially for me as a Jet fan. I mean, I've been counting the days of the NFL draft now for. Uh, a lot longer than teams uh, fan bases that have been in the postseason so i can't wait for it to get started i know brandon and all the other players that we've been lucky enough to interview here on the ofn meeting room uh just can't wait we have more interviews to come uh we'll interview cam phillips on friday uh we also have uh, max brown on friday uh the uh, former usc quarterback uh and of course he also uh went on uh, to play for pittsburgh so we'll talk to him and that's uh, not uh, that's not all. We, we've got uh, a whole bunch of other interviews that we're gonna we're gonna try to get to before the draft. And speaking of the draft, make sure to order your draft guide, the Our Lads draft guide. Go to the subscription page at ourlads.com. Order your draft guide right now. You'll get it within 24, 48 hours, depending on how fast you want it. So don't forget about that. And also follow us on Twitter at Prime SN to receive all of our updated announcements uh it lets you know when we're going to be sending out these shows on demand and of course our comments and much more uh, so that'll wrap it up we'll see you also don't forget tomorrow if you're listening to this show on wednesday or early on thursday on thursday afternoon dan shank and i are going to have our mock draft special so you want to tune in uh for that we're looking forward to it that's three eastern on thursday uh, and uh, that'll be exactly one week before the draft. And then we're going to let you know about all our programming and additional content uh, that we've got coming on, including mock draft reports and such, and our draft shows. We've got podcast shows during the draft. So we'll let you know exactly when that's going to be, too. So uh, again, thanks to Brandon Faison for joining us. I'm Greg DePama. This is the OFN Meeting Room on the Our Lads Football Radio Network, where it's never too early to think about the NFL draft.